Hello, my name is Walter McGorry and welcome to Call of the Runes. Today we're going to talk about Anzus. Anzus is the fourth rune of the first Hayat and it represents the letter A. The literal meaning of Anzus is Asir or God. But specifically, as you'll see further on in this video, this is a rune that represents Odin. Uh, this rune in readings is linked to eloquence, to the Asir the gods, um, and to wisdom and leadership. And with that, let's begin. We'll start with the rune poems again. The first rune poem is the Norwegian rune poem, and it goes as follows. River mouth is the way of most journeys, but the scabbard of swords. The river mouth is where the river flows to the sea. This is the literal meaning, but metaphorically, it also might represent storytelling. Rivermouth is a part of many journeys for a seafaring people like the Vikings, and they would like to tell the boastful tales of high adventure, and in telling these tales, that would lead to new people going on to the next adventure. So it's not just the port through which they leave to set sail to England or other places to have adventure, to pillage, to raid, but also the stories that are told in the hall afterwards, which inspire a new generation of people going on these adventures. Um, the river mouth, as the scabbard of the sword, is another but linked interpretation. Uh, stories might give rise to adventure, but a good orator can also use diplomacy to keep the swords in the scabbards. As we'll see later on, this rune is strongly linked to Odin, and Odin himself is not the strongest warrior of the gods. That honor is reserved for Thor. And when battle is, has to happen, when a challenge of the Jotun, it comes to uh, Valhalla, or Asgard in general, then Thor is sent out to fight. Odin's strength is not so much in war, even though he is a great warrior, but it is in strategy and in stories. Uh, he uses his smarts to trick people, to outsmart them. So it's not always uh, a war can be won um, by swords alone, but war can also be won by trickery, by oration, so that the war is already won before the first sword actually leaves the scabbard. So in that regard, um, stories can lead to both peace, but also to victory in war without the swords leaving their scabbard. The second poem is the Icelandic poem, and goes as follows. Uh, Aged Gauter and chieftain As uh, and lord of Valhalla. All three of these are canning for Odin. Uh, Gauter means the creator or the shaper, and it's also the origin of the name of the Geats, which are people who believe that they are descendants of Odin, at least in the sagas. Uh, this is a title for Odin, uh, because he is in, as we talked about in both the runes of Theresas and Urus, he is one of the creators of the world, after they slew Ymir, they created the world out of that, but also as the creator of mankind, another story. Chief then of Asgard shows him as the leader of the gods, uh, which is Odin's place. Uh, in the world's tree, there's nine realms, and in the top realm, is Asgard, the garden of the gods. As, the same uh, as as Anzus comes from, uh, meaning the Asir, the gods of Norse mythology, and Gard from garden, so the garden of the gods, quite literally. And there Odin rules over all the gods. Uh, and Lord of Valhalla, that's the last one, uh, Valhalla means the hall of the, val the fallen. Uh, you can hear it, fall, hall. The Hall of the Fallen. This is the Hall of Odin, where Odin lives. This hall stands within Asgard, and half of the people who die honorable deaths in battle go here. This is important to note, though, that Asgard, that Valhalla, is not Viking heaven. Um, there's other places where people who pass away can go. This is a place where specifically the warriors go, who are chosen by Odin to assist him during Ragnarok, his personal bodyguard. 
you can have you can go to a place that is quite positive in the afterlife or in some cases there's some forms of reincarnation and in other stories there's forms of people becoming uh, land spirits themselves um, so not everybody who dies in Norse mythology goes to either Valhalla or is cursed to a terrible terrible fate like that is in uh, Christianity where there's a heaven and a hell no there is a hell in Norse mythology and the word hell here is where the Christians get their word hell from but hell in Norse mythology is not necessarily a bad place or evil place to go it's also not the only place where you could go if you don't go into Valhalla but Valhalla is often seen in media as the heaven of Norse mythology and that's not completely true if you have died honorably in battle so if you are a warrior uh, then you are picked by the Valkyries potentially to go here. Half of the people go to Valhalla, half of the people go to Freya Hall, where they are also trained as bodyguards. Valhalla has an enormous building. It has four, uh, 540 doors and each door is wide enough to let 800 people through simultaneously. Uh, here the Enheyar, that means uh, one man army or people who fight alone or can fight alone. This is the name of the people who have died and have brought there. They train for all eternity uh, for Ragnarok. The final rune poem is the Anglo-Saxon one. And the Anglo-Saxon one then focuses back to the mouth or language. Where So the poem goes as follows. Mouth is the source of all languages, a pillar of wisdom and a comfort to wise men. A blessing and a joy to every thing. We see a strong connection between Odin and language. Uh, for example, it said that Odin only speaks in verse, at least according to Inglega Saga, uh, and this is to show that he has a mastery of speech. In Skaldskaparmal, it is told how Odin steals the meat of poetry uh, and eventually shares this with all humanity giving them the gift of poetry and wisdom. So Odin is known for his eloquence and Odin is also known for giving people the gift of poetry. Uh, besides the mouth, uh, there's also another source of language and this is a written language. And again, here Odin plays a very important part. Uh, the runes, according to the Havamal, were earned by Odin by sacrificing himself to himself. He hung from the world tree, from the, the Midgard, uh, from Yggdrasil, uh, and after nine days, with his own spear plunged through his body, he fell, and he pulled the runes out of another world. This gift he then gives to humanity and to the other gods. We'll see this theme come back a couple of times in the other videos that a gift in Norse mythology demands a gift. You can't just get the runes you have to give something back if you want them and odin got such a large gift in the runes that he had to sacrifice himself gift himself up in that way in order to get the runes in another story uh, concerning wisdom odin wants a sip from mimir's well the well of wisdom and again here we see the sacrifice that he has to do he plucks out one of his eyes and throws the eye into the well he's not allowed to take a sip if he doesn't so a gift in Norse mythology requires a gift, and so did the runes. Um, we see this uh, attitude to wisdom in Havamal 103. Though glad at home and merry with guests, a man shall be wary and wise, a sage and shrewd, wide wisdom seeking, must see that his speech be fair. A fool is he named, who not can say, for such is the way of the witless. So eloquence, being able to speak well in company, is seen as a very high virtue in Norse mythology. The Havamal, again, is a set of poems which both tell uh, the story of Odin in part, but also Odin's advice for humanity. And this is one of the advice poems. So you're a fool if you cannot speak well, that you show that you're witless. But you also can't talk too much. If you are a uh, sage, then you speak fair, but also shrewdly.
um, a thing, and that's the final line of the poem, is a free man in Norse society. So that's not a king, uh, but he is a man who is not owned and who can own land in his own regard. Uh, and a measure of wisdom that's bestowed on him is, of course, always a cause of joy. We see answers also in charms and amulets. Um, many formulaic charms, for instance, contain the word alu, which uh, is sometimes translated as dedicated or blessed. Because it's mostly used on amulets, there is no direct translation for it, and we don't know exactly what alu means. Uh, for instance, the Lindholm charm, uh, DR261, uses the word alu. The first line translates to I, the Erlias, I am called uh, Salihas, and the second line uh, is eight Anza's runes, three all his runes, and three now this runes, followed by an alu. That's a similar structure as we saw in the Teresa's video, where there is Anza's runes, there's now this runes in repetition, and then a third rune, which is uh, determines what this is about. So the, um, the Naudis rune binds this into destiny. The Anzus rune calls upon the gods in order to make it so, or maybe specifically on Odin as the lord of the runes. And then the Alghis rune, which is a rune of protection, is the rune that uh, this charm is actually about. So this is a rune of a charm meant to cause protection for uh, Erlias. We'll see the word Alu. And uh, I think, and this is my personal opinion, that the word alu is in this case used in the same way as the Anzus rune, in order to call upon the favor or call upon the attention of the gods towards this charm to make it so. Um, call an Odin, bind in fate, protection. That is what this charm would be then. Um, culturally, Anzus is of Anzus, and specifically Odin, is also very interesting. Christian sources make Vikings look like just bloodthirsty barbarians. And that is how most TV shows show the Vikings as well. Um, running around, showing about who is most macho, uh, reveling in bloodshed, reveling in blood in general, laughing at their wounds. And that is maybe partially uh, some grains of truth. Certainly there have been stories of Vikings who have acted in such a way. But it's very telling that not the strongest warrior rules uh, the Asir, the Norse gods, but the gods of wisdom. And you can often see in a culture that their supreme god is the god that holds the highest virtue, the, the god that you have to aspire to. And that's not the strength of Thor, who is by definition the best warrior of the gods. And there's other warrior gods like Tyr, who could also have been the supreme god. Maybe at some point war was. But from the stories we know, the main god is the poet, is the wizard, is the sage, Odin. So that is has to have been, for Vikings, the highest virtue attainable, to be wise, not to be a strong warrior. And uh, not to say that Odin is not a strong warrior in his own right. He is. He's just not of the gods, the strongest of the warriors. Uh, sp and that makes sense because speaking the right words can change the world. Uh, some charms that we'll see in these videos are nothing more than a simple statement uh, in a formulaic structure. I will say this and thus it happens. One of the most common named uh, types of magic in in Scandinavian mythology is Galvar. That's not amulets, uh, but it literally translates to chanting. It is a form of magic where people would chant, would sing, and by speaking, they would change the world. Uh, the other form, just for the completionist, is uh, Scyther, and that's more of a shamanistic type of magic, where Galdr is more linked to men, uh, Cider is more linked to women and fortune telling and life and death and the boundaries in between. In later sources, Galdor is sometimes called white magic and Cider is sometimes called black magic. That's almost certainly a Christian uh, lens 
over the culture of the Scandinavian people. This is very interesting because in Norse mythology, by speaking something, by writing something, it is true. It doesn't become true. It is true because you said so. It's not the Christian, let there be light, uh, and then light appears. It is, there is light. And because you said it, there is light. So you're not saying what you want to happen. You're saying what is. And by that statement, you make it true. In conclusion, then, uh, Ansys is sort of the rune of the runes. It is the rune of Odin, of the spoken word, and the god who governs both the spoken word and the runes and poetry, uh, Odin. In that sense, it is a rune of eloquence and magic. If you use this rune in readings, uh, then it can refer both to speech or to Odin. In combination with Tiwas, justice, uh, it can be used as mediation. You're trying to get to justice through the spoken word. In combination with Ewas, which is uh, the horse rune, then it can be Odin's horse, Sleipnir, and in that case means travel, or maybe travel between the realms. Now we're talking about uh, maybe forms of astral travel, which also exist within Norse mythology, but by a different name. And we'll get to that in a later video as well. So it's a very uh, broad rune, as a rune of the runes. Um, with that, we come to our ending again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to support this channel, the best way that you can do this is to either uh, get my book, Call of the Runes, everything I said is in there, and much, much more, or leave a good review. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.